Hi. So um, my name is Pradeep Mutalik, and uh, I'm going to open your eyes uh, about the Sleeping Beauty paradox. Uh, this, what, what I'm going to talk about today is going to be published uh, very shortly in Quantum Magazine, maybe today. So what is the safe Sleeping Beauty problem? It's a famous open problem uh, about probabilities described around the year 2000, and it seems like a simple puzzle. But it has been very polarizing ever since, and it has remained open without consensus. It has two solutions. One third, say, say the thirders, and half, say the halfers. And the debates can be pretty contentious, and I've experienced that. It's almost like Trump versus Cruz. Uh, it, it has produced a voluminous literature and lots of web chatter. So just uh, curious, how many of you have heard of this problem before? Uh, yeah, there are about maybe 10, 15. And how many of you are thirders? Oh, just one? <laughs> and how, uh, the rest are harfers? Um, anyway, so, so we have a sampling of, of both. So, um, so what is the Sleeping Beauty experiment uh, problem? So it's basically an experiment that Sleeping Beauty uh, subjects herself to. Uh, on Sunday, she is put to sleep, but before she goes to sleep, she's told what's going to happen. A coin is going to be tossed, and um, depending on whether it comes up heads or tails, different things happen. If, if it's heads, she's woken up on uh, Monday. If it's tails, she's woken up on Monday and Tuesday and interviewed each time. And then the experiment ends on Wednesday. But this X represents that at the end, after she's woken up, after her interview, she's given a drug that makes her forget that she ever awoke, although she remembers all the details of the experiment. And every time she's woken up, she's asked, what is your degree of certainty that the coin landed heads? And what should her answer be? So that's the question. OK, so now spoiler alert. Uh, the solution uh, I'm going to tell you my solution. And so those who haven't heard the problem before and would like to attempt it, you're free to uh, give in to temptation and consume the forbidden fruit of your iPhones, iPads, iPads, and other iThings. Or stay and listen, because it's impossible for me to explain this properly in six minutes. <laughs> OK, so what are the thirder and uh, halfer arguments? Uh, what, what the thirders say is that these three events are independent, and uh, they are indistinguishable to Snow White because she is amnesic. And um, they are equiprobable. And only one of them is heads. So the answer is one third. What the halfers say is that the original probability of the coin being a fair coin is half heads. All that happens in this experiment is predetermined. It gives no new information about what actually happened in the coin toss. Therefore, the probability should remain half, because there's no new information. So the key phrase here is that the coin landed heads. When we refer to a past event, how much background of the event should we import? And this is an interpretation problem that always arises when the past tense is used. For example, what is your belief that the rock star spent a full year's earning on his first guitar? We're not talking about his earnings today, He's a rock star, but his earnings when he was uh, starting out his career. So we're importing the past. I call this the action interpretation. On the other hand, what is the belief that a US Supreme Court justice attended Yale Law? Uh, in this case, you're not concerned about his choice he made when he went to law school, but you're using Yale Law as a property, as against his opposite property, which is Harvard Law. So. <laughs> So before, um, before Scalia passed away, uh, the probability was one third. So, so now, here's the intuition that you have to develop to get these two interpretations. Um, you have to, in case of the, um, the halfers, the image they have is that of the coin toss. Um, so Sleeping Beauty here is thinking about the coin toss, and being a fair coin, of course, the answer is half. But the property interpretation, so, so she's importing the action. Here, the property interpretation, um, she's, not, she's only concerned with the property. The, imagine that the coin was preserved in the safe, and if you look at the, the coin in the safe, 
And that's what the Sleeping Beauty is thinking of, that what would the coin in the safe show right now? And the answer there is one third. Now you'll say, wait a minute, isn't the coin that was tossed the same one that's in the safe? Yes, but the probability of heads in the act of tossing a coin need not be the probability of heads in the same coin at some time uh, later, because some unknown systematic processes can alter it. For example, coins can be lost in space. I see some coins here, and some G4G magicians vanished these last two coins. So now my probability of heads is one third. Or I could have double vision. Unknown to me, I only see tails double. So I see four tails, there are actually only two there. And um, oh, sorry, there are, there are four heads, yeah, there are only two there, but I see four, and there are two heads, and so again, my probability of heads is one third. Um, or you could be in a time warp, where um, you come back in time, but the heads escape the time warp, and you see the tails twice. Or, you know, when you toss the, the coins, half of the heads just go poof, they explode. So, so now their the probability is one third. So any systematic, unknown systematic process that alters frequencies uh, can alter the probability of heads under the property interpretation, but not under the action interpretation. And here, this shows that here, um, Sleeping Beauty is in a time warp, and that is why the, her probability over there is one third, although the probability in the outside world is half. And so I hope that uh, you can now perceive both views of the Sleeping Beauty Necker cube. Thank you very much. Thank you.